Okay, uh, ground control to Captain Ace. <laughs> <Mace. laughs> Oh, ground so control to Captain. Oh, there you are. I'm here. I'm here. I have been nowhere other than glued to Ingenuity, except for you know the few hours that I had to sleep last night. How exciting is Mars? Very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> now, we've got plenty to talk about here, so I'll give you the lowdown. NASA has successfully flown a helicopter on the surface of Mars. The first time humans have achieved powered flight on another planet. Director of the Space Technology and Industry Institute at Swinburne, Alan Duffy, watched it all unfold on NASA's webcast last night. And he joins me now, I think probably equally excited. Alan, I had to go to bed. So can you tell me exactly what happened? Leave nothing uh, out at all, please. So last night, uh, we were all glued, the world was glued to the live feed. So we're getting live feed back from an alien world as we desperately hope for the successful launch of this helicopter. And slowly but surely, over the hours, the signal arrived and eventually we had confirmed that Ingenuity rose. It flew all the way up to three meters, hovered and then safely returned. So this was a very small step, but it truly is a giant leap in technological innovation because Mars is not the place that you would go to try to fly a helicopter. The, the air is a hundred times thinner than here on Earth, meaning there's really nothing for those helicopter blades to push against and actually lift you up. So NASA had to redesign everything about that helicopter. And you, you see this beautiful double court screwed uh, blade design just to try to, to come up with a way to fly on, on a planet that really shouldn't be flown. And they did it, and we were all very relieved, I have to say, when that first uh, wonderful altitude plot arrived. Absolutely. I've tried to fly a drone before, and I crash uh, pretty regularly. How on earth did we achieve this? I mean, there wasn't a person flying it, was it? Yeah, so look, there was a, there were, certainly in the initial test stages, there was a, a, a fault was received. NASA delayed the, the test, uh, launched them by about a week uh, to rectify that. All of this is happening on an alien world about a quarter of a billion kilometers away. So really an extraordinary effort, but that distance also means that we can't control it. So there was no Nate steering that drone. In this case, we were, uh, all of the instructions had to be loaded up in advance. The whole thing flew autonomously with, with itself controlling. Uh, and essentially, that's why we were also terrified because we really had no idea if it succeeded or not. And the test itself had happened many hours before we finally were able to get the data back. But really, it's a triumph of engineering to make this, this craft uh, function. And over the coming weeks, we'll now see ever more advanced tests to really push it through its paces. Yeah, lucky for NASA, I wasn't at the controls. Now, what does this mean for future extraplanetary exploration? In fact, no, forget about the future. What does it mean for extraplanetary exploration right now? Well, look, this really is the beginning of a completely new way of exploring these alien worlds. The rovers are very slowly, cumbersomely moving across the surface. They're, we're always worried they might get in trouble and, and go down uh, ditches or, or, or get stuck in, a, in an area that we just couldn't see. You only have that one camera from the rover. Well, now you've got your little buddy able to fly ahead and map it out. It can also go places that the rovers just simply can't and take new samples, new science from areas that are completely inaccessible. That's what this little rover, the size of a tissue box, just a couple of kilograms in weight, has um, uh, unveiled. This helicopter now allows us access to the skies and a much greater amount of that red planet to explore.